I think we're good to go. Maybe. I don't know. I'm tired. I literally just came down to the studio and fired up everything and hopefully it works. Hopefully you guys contribute by asking questions because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm tired. Hello, Mr. Tim, Ginger Down Under, and Fedora Gent are here. Tim says they had a cloud burst run through here an hour ago. That means it was probably downpour. My rich friend Todd is here. Evening. I need to, I don't need to. I think I'm going to have a little pour. I got to pick out what I'm going to sip on tonight. Larry C's here. Uh, Jason, design Altier. Al Taylor is here. I don't know how to say that. Tennessee Mike's here. Bean Boy's checking in from Pennsylvania. Nate Dog checking in from uh, just south of me. Sunny Sinister checking in. Four O'Clock Crown also here. Uh, what shall I drink? Let's see. Mike from Montana's checking in. Thanks for joining us. I only have two watches even on the table. I like was not prepared for this at all. I was. Completely just chilling, relaxing, watching a little bit of television, which I don't do very often. So, uh, Ken's checking in from Pittsburgh. Floridian's here, of course. My buddy uh, Dane, aka Celine Driver, number one troll killer's here. We're in the IWC perpetual moon phase tonight. Uh, my buddy Anonymous Watch Guy, Gary, is here. It's not so anonymous when I name drop, is it? Uh, Fedora Gent explaining how to pronounce things uh, that I'll forget and continue to butcher all words in the English language as well as other languages. Evan says, morning all. Recovering from Knott's Fest, Pantera. Oh, you had a fun time at a hard rock concert. Ken's wearing the NTH sub. It's Guinness night tonight. I don't have any Guinness handy. Uh, Todd says, I already bought the ZRC. No, that's in for video review. Um, I don't know if I'm going to buy it or not. Doxa, I don't know. I'll probably buy the Doxa. Chris, YZ80s here. Uh, let's see, Joe and the Badgers here. Um, all right, let me take a break from dropping names. I got to pick something. What do we have? What do we have? We have, uh, let's see, Henry McKenna. I got some new bottles, but I'm not going to open those. Um... Huh. You know what I haven't had in a long time? I have not had... Is this one open? It is open. I have not had just just some good old Eagle Rare. Used to be my favorite a long time. Uh, has went by and... It's funny, I actually just watched a video. Well, I got water here too. I got water. Um, I was just watching a video, another bourbon video from uh, ADHD... Uh, whiskey bourbon whatever it is this channel and uh, he did a alternatives to yeah i drink it dana i drink a lot of water um there's water in this how do you think they made it it doesn't just magically appear it starts out as water okay yeah eagle rares are actually pretty good uh, but anyway, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, because I have, other than we can talk about watch shows, I just got back from Atlanta, and the uh, Intersect show, which was exactly what I had hoped it would be, probably one of the best shows that I've been to in a while. Ginger Down Under says, somehow doesn't hydrate like water. That is true. Paul's checking in from Dallas. Um, yeah, four o'clock. It wasn't hot. It was like kind of chilly and rainy when I got there, but it, it cleared up a little bit. Um, for, for, for anybody that loves Atlanta, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to like earmuff it right now because I'm about to tell you um, my thoughts on Atlanta. And you don't want to hear this. If you like Atlanta, just go ahead and tune out for a second real quick. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I think about Atlanta. Um, you know what? I'm going to soften the blow. 
I see no reason other than I met some really great people there and I would like to visit them again. I don't know if they could persuade me to go there just to visit them. That's how much I don't like Atlanta. And I'll go to some pretty bizarre places just to meet up with some great people. I'm not sure these people could convince me to go to Atlanta. They're going to have to really sell me on it by taking me to places other than where I was some of the time. I did go to some nice areas too, but um, yeah, I do not look forward to Atlanta. Maybe that'll change in the future. I somehow doubt it. Um, yeah, Celine Driver, 100%. Um, Atlanta's a crime hub. I didn't personally experience that, but with like literally everybody there that I was talking to saying that, um, I definitely was concerned. I was definitely concerned. So, oh, here's a good question. Very good question, Dane. Explain to me how Ocean Crawler, Christian, awesome uh, guy and owner of the Ocean Crawler brand, does Fordite dial watches for $1,200, but the guys at the Atlanta show sell Fordite watches for $4,000. Um, I cannot, I cannot explain that. Uh, I know Fordite is expensive. I wouldn't say it's necessarily difficult to work with. It can be challenging to get the look that you're, you're going after, but, um, the price disparity there is not the dial. It might be other components. That would be the only way I could potentially describe it. If, if that's uh, valid or not, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Well, so I actually didn't think the traffic was too bad because we drove right through it. Now, Cullen was driving, who was, you know, uh, notice and he, um, he said that the traffic seemed worse in Atlanta than it was in LA. So I don't know what traffic in LA is like. I kind of do. I guess I drove the highway and stuff like that. It was it was pretty bad. The little bit of driving that, you know, the Uber rides and, and riding with Cullen from Notice, uh, I didn't think it was, like, terrible. Actually, I rode with um, our buddy that's in our Discord group, uh, Off Duty. He's kind of local to that area, and he chauffeured me around a little bit. So big shout-out to uh, my buddy Off Duty for doing that. I didn't think it was terrible. The traffic, anyway. I know it can be. Okay. Uh, I hear the Gold Club is nice in Atlanta. I don't know, that's probably not nice. Uh, let's see. Fuzzy32 is here. Mark Wazanowski's here. Uh, Evan Kelly's here. James Duffy, of course, is here. Let's see. Peter, Peter Katza is here. Thanks for joining. I'm getting a lot of uh, viewers from around the world. Long time no see, Rob. I've been busy with many work commitments. I just popped in to say hi. P.S. Very nice looking with the beard. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep it or something, but I uh, just, I decided I didn't feel like shaving in what naturally happens with men when they don't shave, much like uh, women when they don't shave their legs. It just grows out. Just grows. It just keeps growing. It's it's nature. It's just natural. It just happens. I did nothing. I did nothing and this is what happened. So I might do more of nothing. I, I really do feel like I could do more nothing because it seems like I'm always doing something. I might do more nothing. I'm thinking about it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mark's, well, look out. I, I got to back up here. Mark says, I do want to go to the next watch show the guys put on. Hope to make the Texas if they plan to. They're going to do Texas. Um, I think they're going to do Texas a little bit later in the year and they're going to do LA. Or if you're talking about Intersect, they're going to do LA. Um, this summer sometime. So Joan the Badger says maybe crass craftsmanship comes into play with Fortnite watches. Uh, Jamie for Black Badger has been working with that material. Yeah. And, and that's the brand uh, that Joe's talking about. That's the brand that Dane was talking about at the beginning of my video. And I had some good conversations with them. Actually, I have his card upstairs. I'm going to probably get one of the watches in to do a video on. And hopefully maybe they can send me a couple, like a piece of Fortnite and, um, and some other things. It's a very interesting look and concept. It's not something that I necessarily gravitate towards, but when it's on the table or somebody's wearing it, I absolutely love looking at it. 
Uh, let's see here. Read some more combat com comments. Uh, MM10 says I'm back. Um, let's see. Peter says, haha, nothing is good. Keep it up. Okay. Um, yeah. I, Peter's channel is awesome. If you haven't subscribed to Peter's channel, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Seriously, there's, he's one of the best, like, videographers out there when it comes to watches. And I'm pretty sure that's what he does in his professional life, too. So, obviously, that's why he has a, a slight advantage over me just recording things with my iPhone. So, um, let's see. I've done nothing. Let's see, Evan says, I've done nothing beard for over six months, not even a trim. Caveman style. I don't know if I would go that far. I'll probably do something uh, with like controlling it, or or maybe I just won't. Maybe I'll go caveman as well. I don't know. Oh, that is awesome, Joe. My wedding ring is Fordite. I'll show you in San Francisco. That is extremely cool. I didn't know that was a thing. Now I'm gonna have to look that up because I could see having a ring of that. Absolutely, that is very cool. Or some sort of jewelry with it. I didn't know they were doing jewelry with it. Uh, let's see. Todd says, did you spot any new watches in Atlanta that caught your eye? I did, but like classic, I didn't take any pictures of, I, I'm so bad with like, uh, I'll wrist spot when like when I'm talking to people, you know, the other thing that at that meetup was pretty funny. Um, I'm sure a lot of people knew of me and my channel, but some of the shows I go to, like I'm spotted more and there's, it stimulates com conversation that didn't really happen a ton at the intersect. Uh, I, I think I flew under the radar a little bit. I didn't wear my hat and people are like, oh, you didn't wear your hat. Like, like I have to wear, like, like this is some sort of disguise. But if I put this on, no, oh, then oh, that's clearly random, Rob. But um, so anyway, it was kind of nice just to go to the show to a certain extent as a maybe just a watch enthusiast and enjoy the show for what it is. So um Look at Ginger Down Under has been doing nothing for 40 years now. So proud of you. Tennessee Mike, is Doxa the 300 or 300T and which one is your preference? I don't know. I, I always mix those up because um, this one is the, one's more expensive too. This is the, uh, I think this is the 300T. If I remember right, isn't it? I think the 300T has the flat sapphire crystal. There's some other differences too. Um, but personally, I, I like this one. The I think the standard 300 is the more like vintage inspired one and it has the boxed crystal. I prefer this one. I think the 300 is a little bit thinner as well. But yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to talk to, if Tyler at Exquisite is working tomorrow, I'm going to talk to him. I might try to pick one of these up. I still got to get my money right. I spent too much money in, uh, yeah, I spent, I spent too much money in Atlanta, that trip. Uh, yeah, because I wasn't really, I wasn't comped into there or anything like that. So let's see. Did you see the new Christopher Ward Chrono and in house skeleton dial? Um, I didn't see the new Chrono, but I did see the other one you're talking about, and I wasn't allowed to take any pictures of it. So I don't know that I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that I'm gonna talk about it. I just read this comment. Tim says, uh, "Ask Celine Driver. You can get a Kia Ite dial watch from AliExpress for only ninety nine ninety nine. Um, unfortunately, they don't paint cars like they used to. So like." the whole Fordite thing, unless you like artificially recreate it, which is not going to be the same thing. Uh, I don't know where else you're going to source it. If there's other um, automotive plants out there that used to paint the cars the old way and paint other parts and stuff like that, where the stuff would build up on the walls or on their benches and uh, do all kinds of weird things, depending on the chemicals in the air, uh, it almost creates like this weird, um, weird, pattern and stuff when you start slicing and stuff so um but that funny statement funny statement so evan says rob i did see more orange dial on the weekend than ever before there you go there you go uh homer thanks for joining says 300t flat like i said on fire 300 bucks and costs 
Um, oh, and COSC movement, the 300 is more expensive. So, okay, well, that's the big difference. I guess I should know that. I kind of did know that because didn't I review that yellow one? And I, I do remember reading that. That one's like 2,500, has the COSC spec movement. The 300T uh, is less expensive. I like that. And has the flat sapphire crystal. So I like that. Steve wants the five or 1500T. That one's really cool. They used to make a 1200T, and the 1200 and the 300 were the same size, uh, but they discontinued that. I guess it kind of didn't really need to do that because the 300 is basically the same thing. Uh, yeah, you guys are you guys are on to it. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. We're reading comments here. Uh, let's see. James Duffy says, Random Rob, please let me cover one of your meals in San Francisco at, or at least be well enough to accept a free watch. <laughs> oh, James, I totally have to. Uh, I, the, the, I mean, obviously, I want to hang out with my Bay Area, Bay Area buddies. Uh, that's my primary goal. But um, secretly, the San Francisco trip is a mission of trying to accomplish going to San Francisco and not getting ill. The last two times I went, I got ill. I don't know if they, they put something in their bourbon. I don't know what it is, but it made me sick. Hmm. Eagle Rare is pretty good. Okay, uh, let's see. My beard has gone completely white, but my head hair is still dark, which I like. Nice contrast, right? Nice contrast. Uh, okay, so it looks like I'm getting some free meals. I'm also trying not to eat as much, so you guys are going to make out on that deal. Um, and I'm not going to drink because I think that might have been the cause of why I was getting sick. So, um, yeah, you guys, I don't know, you could buy me a coffee or something. Uh, let's see, Dane, I'll take you up on that. You know I will. Um, I think I think you already covered a meal or two for me before. You took me out to breakfast, actually. First time I had ever been to... What was that place called? Um, first Watch. It was the first time I ever had avocado toast. And Dane covered it. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. YZ80 says, sorry to make you reach back there, Rob, but I forgot what the watch is next to the Doxa. Huh? Oh, the ZRC? This guy? The ZRC. Grand Fawns in the tangerine orange. Tangerine orange. Oh, let's see. Here. Um, meet up with me and Dane in Florida in October. Uh, get with me on the dates on that. I might be able to make that happen. There you go. There you go. Tim, start with a health, healthy dose of peanut butter and jelly, and you'll be fine. Oh, I nope, nope, nope. I know what you're doing there. I know what you're doing. Um, you're not you're not talking about actual peanut butter and actual jelly. You're talking about screwdriver or uh, screwball. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see, ginger donor. Hey, uh, let's see. Tom says, hey Rob, did they have an ordain watches for sale at Intersect? I checked out the booth and I talked to him and stuff like that, but I don't think they were selling. So that was one of the brands, kind of the ones up up front. They came over um, to the United States. So typically when a brand comes over to the United States, they don't really have watches to sell because they have to like go through customs. They have to go back with the same amount they left with. Otherwise, there's other uh, issues with uh, fees and stuff like that. So James Duffy says, all good. I don't drink and I'm on a rather restrictive diet, going to cheat a little bit of wind up. I might follow your lead on that stuff, James Duffy. Um, some of it, not all of it. Jason says he needs to review a ZRC. They're pretty dang cool. They're pretty cool. They're pretty unique and they're pretty cool. First Watch is good. I've been to First Watch restaurants all in a bunch of different places. And some are better than others. That's all I can say about that. Um, I would... I now know in certain areas I will seek alternatives, but the the one down by uh, Naples is freaking awesome. That that was like that's like one of my favorite ones, and the one actually over in Sarasota, over by Dane, was awesome. Without having the random Rob logo on the back. Oh, 
Yeah, you're talking about the uh, ZRC. The ZRC is pretty dope. And one day I might own it. So uh, Let's see. Leslie was there, actually. I hung out with Leslie for a little while. 2029 for Anne Ordain watches? Or is it going to be 2029 before you buy an Anne Ordain watch? Not sure what that 2029 means. Uh, let's see. If you like First Watch, you would love... Let's see. Now we're talking food. If you'd like First Watch, you would love the Big Biscuit local chain here. I would probably like that. And I do like Big Biscuits. I cannot lie. Oh, didn't know that either. The original First Watch is in Sarasota. That might be the one that Dane... Uh, probably not the one Dane... Uh, it might have been. It wasn't like in a strip mall. I think it was kind of by itself. That might have been the one we went to. Yes. Yes, and Dane, if, if we're keeping count, you also bought dinner for um, all of us. We had a nice little, uh, well, dinner or lunch? Was that kind of lunch or was that dinner? I don't know what time of day it was. It doesn't matter. I remember I had, uh, I don't know why I can remember this stuff, but I can't remember people's names. I think I had a salmon salad or something, uh, but it was right that little place right by um, Exquisite Timepieces. It was good. Uh, Paul says, are you going to get the Snoopy Moon Swatch by Swatch? I, If I do, it'll be extremely random. It'll probably be um, maybe in New York or something, and I just go for a walk, and I go to Times Square, and I walk in there, and they're like, hey, would you like the Snoopy Moon Swatch? And I'd be like, well, yes, yes, I would. That would be about the only way that it would happen. Uh, otherwise, no, I'm not going to go out of my way for it. If somebody wants, if gets one and wants to send it in for me to video, uh, that honestly works better. I'd have no problem doing with that. <laughs> and Dane is, Dane is confirming my memory. Thank you. Um, I, I have a good memory when it doesn't count. And I remember things that don't matter. Uh, design here. Jason says, wow, Dane first watch is the best location for me to give you my first watch. Ah, nice play on words. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, we're, we're going to count dinners. You guys don't want to count dinners with me. I've bought a lot of dinners. Floridian says, I bought dinner at Naples too. So that was last uh, October, the recent uh, visit there. Unfortunately, Dane had to bolt. Otherwise, he would have hung out with us. But yeah, my good buddy Randy, a.k.a. Floridian, hooked up me and a group of people that were with me. Um, uh, apps, dinners, drinks, all of that stuff at uh, Yard House, which is also, again, in Florida, the first time I've ever been to Yard House. Big fan of it, kind of. Some of them. Yard House was pretty good. So thank you guys. for Thanks, everybody, for buying me dinners and meals and lunches and breakfast, all that stuff. Let's see. Todd says, uh, Ginger Don Honor, I have not bought Rob dinner, but I did buy him a watch. You uh, you bought me a watch. You also bought me a drink. I paid for it, though, if I remember right, which is fine. Um, I don't remember. Is that how that went down? I can't remember. But you were the one that got me turned on to the mixing the champ chambro or whatever it is with the screwball, um, something like that. But we don't keep count. We don't keep count. It doesn't matter, guys. Uh, let's see. Paul says, uh, anybody make it to Austin or Dallas to a watch event and want to buy me dinner? Let me know I'm down. Paul's fun to hang out with, guys. Seriously, if you are in the Austin or Dallas area and you want to like hang out with a, a fun watch guy, try to get a hold of Paul. He's he's a fun guy to hang out with. And turns out he's good friends with George Bush. That's a slight exaggeration. That's fine, though. Um... Joe says, Rob bought me dinner. I did get just the tip, though. Or, or he got the tip. Yeah, that was something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was that was actually a really good uh, meal. Best still, best onion rings I've ever had was that. I don't even remember what the heck the place was called. Uh, right downtown uh, Fort Collins. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, everybody. You all just got owned. MM10 on the scene actually sent me i think it was sliced spam too i didn't even have to cut it so mm10 in with the mic drop um 100 and i did eat it as well i actually just bought a can of spam not that long ago and i thought of you mike i thought of you 
Oh, wow. Spam is great with eggs. That's that's the way to eat it, I think. That is 100% the way to eat it. Um, although you could do it in like uh, fried rice or something like that. There's a bunch of other ways you could do it. Spam isn't real, Dane. Dane, you're not real. Tell me spam isn't real. Spam, <laughs> spam is great. Uh, Nate Dog says Rob bought me a time grabber. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. We're, we're here. We go. We're just we're on a we're on a, like a perpetual loop. Everyone's like keeping score here. Tennessee Mike hooked me up. I was on my way down. We we're doing Christmas with my wife's entire family. We rented awesome condos right on um, Anna Marie Island. And on the way down, the timing of it worked out perfect. We ended up staying the night, interrupting the drive in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Tennessee Mike came over. Thankfully, got to meet him in person for the first time. Um, and he came bearing gifts. He gave me banana bread. And I took that banana bread and I went to Florida with it. And I wouldn't let anybody else touch it. Um, but that was what I had for breakfast the entire vacation. Um, I think some people snuck and took a slice anyway, but um, I was very protective of the banana bread. And it was very good. So, And it's not the first time. He's done it again, too. So he's also sent me bread a second time. Oh, let's see. Let's see. We're talking, we're talking spam, spam, spam. German sausage. Love banana bread. Are you kidding me? Okay, okay. Well, let's get off uh, food and buying things for everybody. Let's talk watch shows. Intersect was awesome. You guys watched my videos. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, whatever. Um, I couldn't monetize either one of them, but I'm not mad about it. Uh, the freaking AI bot thing or whatever at YouTube uh, must have picked up a little bit in the background of some sort of Grateful Dead song and where they were just like, nope, you cannot get paid for this video. Fine, whatever. I still want the people to watch the video, so I guess I'll just not get paid. Thank you very much, YouTube and Grateful Dead. Dang it. Okay. Um, this weekend, there is a watch show in Chicago, but it's very, very private. Floridian says, were those cars for sale? I don't know that those cars were like openly for sale, but all those cars are owned by car guys. That's like a club or something like that. And in my experience, mm, probably more than 50% of car guys are kind of like watch guys where they're, it might not be for sale, but like if you start throwing around numbers, yeah, they'll probably sell it. So yeah, there was some there was some le legit really cool uh, cars there, pretty cool stuff and like oddball, weird, crazy stuff too. Like not stuff that you would think that would be in like a car club thing, like some legit old race cars and stuff like that. So, um, so there is like I said, there is a watch show in Chicago this weekend, but it is a invite only. I don't think I'm going to go to it. I got too much stuff going on, um, and it's Easter weekend, which. I don't know if they realized that when they did that. Like, I know I have, I think I have Friday off work. Um, and I'll probably try to hang out with some family this weekend. But I'm going to try to throw together a, a small Sunday fun day sale for Sunday. So I know that might, you know, give me problems at the pearly gates doing that on Easter Sunday. But I got to start moving some of these watches because uh, the weekend after that, we're going to, I'm going to be in Chicago for the minutes and hours. That's my plan anyway. I'll show you the uh, screen, this screen. So minutes and hours, uh, as you can clearly see on the screen now, is in, let's see, in Chicago, April 6th and 7th. If we look at the lineup, you can get free tickets. There's uh, there's the presenting brands. Of course, Christopher Ward will be there, which will should be um, Mike Pearson. And then, of course, we got all these other brands, which um, it, it'll be fun to cover the, the show. I like covering the shows. I know people always ask me, like, you know, what watch stood out to you or anything like that. I'm like, I, I don't know. They're just – guys, I just I, – I look at the watches – I see the watches all the time, like, uh, unless it's an orange dial and it's interesting to me, um, the other ones I just, I like look at them and I appreciate them and stuff, but it's difficult for me to just answer that question. What, what stood out to you? What to, I don't know, like, you want me to pick your watch out for you? I guess I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, 
but I'm excited to go check it out. There's some cool brands there that, and, and people that I want to hang out with, like I want to hang out with Mac from Canopy. He's my buddy. Um, who else is there that I hang out with? Like, I know the Trafford guys. I know, I know quite a few of these people, the Hind guys. Um, Forstner is going to be there. That's the bracelet company. I, I'm, I'm going to take this bracelet back to him. I don't really care for it that much. Uh, Swiss watch company. I, I got to find out who's going to be there. If it's uh, Jacob or who else is going to be there. Richard Harvey, you know, I've talked to him a few times. Haven't hung out with him after or before the show. Sometimes that's fun. Uh, let's see who else is. Okay. So here you got direct links. Townsend is going to be there. That's pretty cool. Oh, they got, they changed the layout a little bit. They got some more pictures. Hmm. So honestly, a pretty good lineup. Like, I don't want to pick on anybody's show or anything, but it looks like a pretty solid lineup. Fair, oh, Farron Switt's going to be there. So I'm, I'm just going to go one day. I'll probably just be there like Saturday. I'll drive down either early. I'll probably leave early Saturday morning and then I'll hang out at the show Saturday and then I'll just catch a hotel or somewhere and then uh, head home Sunday or something like that. I'm not going to spend uh, an insane amount of time there. Uh, let's see here. Is it the same location or same lineup at each location? Probably not. Can we click on... We can't click on the other locations. Probably not. That's a good question, Fuzzy, uh, because even with Wind Up, you'll see different uh, brands going to different shows. You'll see some do all three, some just do two. Um, so typically, you will see a slight rotation with it. You'll see many of the same, but you'll see a slight rotation based on whatever their scheduling and also like their just geographical location. And that'll be the same case even at district time. There was different people there on Saturday versus Sunday. Some of the people that were there Saturday weren't there Sunday. And then a couple other people I added in on Sunday versus Saturday. Um, and the same thing even with Intersect, you'll see a little bit of switching around. You'll see some of the core brands pretty much be at all the Intersects, but you will see some slight variation at each show. Probably maybe not enough to justify going to all the shows like, uh, like I do and like I know some other people do. So... Uh, much like I, I try to preach to people, don't don't try to consume watches at the level that I show on here. This is a bit of a fantasy. Line. I'm a YouTube channel. I'm showing watches every day. You know, that's not normal. You shouldn't, like, have that many watches cycling in and out. That, I'm, this is a channel, right? It's not, it's not real life. It's fantasy. In the same way that, like, me going to all these shows, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, if you think you're just going to travel to all these shows and just go to all of them, sure, go to a few, but, you know, you can't go to every show that's that's like a job that's like a full-time job or something you know the that's the heck some of the brands don't even do that so i wouldn't advocate you doing that i guess is what i would say it's it's not it's not nor i don't mean it like that it, it is normal to have a lot of watches i think it's fine um more so it's you know at the 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 tenacity that I show the watches, I wouldn't want somebody to keep up with that, I guess is what my point is. Uh, a lot of watches, perfectly normal. Yes, indeed. I mean, there's a slight chance I won't make it to the show, maybe. But I'm going to try to go. But I do have a lot of things going on. Like today, I was going to cancel. I had uh, today off as a vacation day, and I was going to cancel and go to work. But my daughter's on spring break, and she's working on this uh, hockey robot thing for a robot competition that they're going to be doing. And uh, so I I helped her all day with that. So trying to get that thing sorted out. Um, the, yes, this is correct, Sunny Sinister uh, at Random Rock. So what I hear you saying is I need to start a YouTube channel to justify the amount of watches or watch consumption. That is correct. Um, that is what I've done. It's been an elaborate ploy to, uh, you know, fool, the, you know, whatever, use 
the channel for tax deductions to support my insane hobby, I guess. I don't, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> anonymous, anonymous watch guy says, uh, bad idea, bad idea. Um, yeah, so it can, so now we're anonymous. What I think what anonymous watch guy is saying is he's in the earth. He's got a, a YouTube channel as well. And he does, you know, watch videos like, you know, like what I've been doing. Um, but he's in the earlier stages of it. And I think back, uh, I don't know how long I've been doing it, like six or seven years. But I remember in the beginning when I was really going nuts with it and I was just buying a lot of watches. I remember my wife even saying like, what, what are you doing? Like, this is not a good idea. This is, you should not do that. And actually just the watch just confirmed that. But I, I had this vision and I was just like, I, I think this is going to work. I just, I have this, you know, gut feeling. I think this is going to work. I have to do this. Um, so I just fully committed to it and she just watched me do it the whole time shaking her head. Well, you know, fast forward six years, uh, somewhere in there it slowly transitioned where I didn't have to buy the watches like I w was and lose literally thousands and thousands of dollars um, to the point where it kind of slowly transitioned to where, you know, I had the support of uh, you guys, you know, the, the fans, the watch enthusiasts. I had a lot of watches sent in uh, back in the day from the enthusiast level, like you guys watch it. Uh, that was a, bi a big, massive support to the channel. And then that even transitioned into where I was sourcing the content from directly from micro brands or from authorized dealers. And, and now it's, now it's really to the point where I, I don't really need help sourcing content. Like I, I have to do um, a lot of work just to maintain the, the content that's coming in now. Floridian. Oh boy, saying some things I didn't think you'd say. My collection is ramping up since I've never sold. Am I thinking of selling now? Um, if there's some things that are just collecting dust and you're not, let them go, man. Randy, hit me up. Send them in. We'll do Sunday Fun Day or something like that or throw them up on flippers on Discord. Let them go. There's nothing wrong with that, man. And you That's old money. You already spent that money. So you could take that and get... Get a little PayPal money built back up and then maybe buy a different watch that you want to try. So, um, actually, we could let me uh, let me bring that up. Let me load up the Discord server. And we will go to Flipper's Paradise. And I, a lot of people in the chat are, yeah, so there you go. Just the watch says, uh, that's a good point. My wife is a lot more supportive now that the channel pays for itself. 100%, 100%. Um, same thing for me. It's uh, It was a transition, you know. Um, it, it's not for everybody because you, ha you have to, like, you have to get there. And the only way to get there is just, it's nuts. It's not, it's not easy. If it was easy. Everyone would do it. And clearly not everyone's doing it. So uh, let's see. Dad's mods watches is here. Dane says flippers paradise is dead. I don't know how you can say that you literally just sold like two or three watches on there. You're so full of it. Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you this. Okay. So here's flippers paradise right now. Colby on here has four watches for sale and he just messaged me and he might send me a couple watches but he was asking me for advice on the price of the zen 105 utc on bracelet he said he's down to 1400 dollars. he's like is that is that high or is something wrong or something um and i said no i think 14 that's 1400 is probably what i would put that on flippers or on sunday funday for i would probably put that on there for 14 this guy right here the Zelos is good looking. The Raven is good looking. The Seiko is good looking. I, I don't know about the prices on there. I'll have to look them up. Um, but yeah, in, uh, in this private group, these prices are usually lower than where you'll see elsewhere. Um, let's see, Charlie, let's, we have a 44. I mean, there's some incredible deals on there. 
let's see, I think that's Hector selling his GMT uh, Breitling. He wants twenty three fifty for it. That's pretty good. You might have to dip closer under two though for that. I could be wrong. Probably not. Uh, let's see. I think that's a Hamilton, isn't it? I can't tell. There's an Oris that sold. Homer sold his Oris. That GMT sold. That sold. That sold. But look at the prices. Two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. Uh, those all sold. Watch my pipe. This is actually a really cool watch here. Uh, it's a watch gecko. I know it's hard to see, but it's actually a pretty cool watch that people kind of sleep on. Um, Dane is saying his Tudor did not sell. And he's talking about his Tudor Black Bay 925 Silver. It's actually the, you know, the 925 Silver. Um, and his price is good. His price is good. Um, and he put, yeah, he put it up for 2,500 bucks. Not every watch is going to sell on here. We only have a limited amount of buyers and, you know, you might put that watch on there. I mean, if you put it on there ridiculously cheap, somebody would buy it. That's just the way it is. You know, you might think 2,500 is already ridiculously cheap and it, to a certain extent it kind of is, but, um, you had to create a fear of missing out. Um, this isn't Mark sold from Jordan V dub, but I actually bought that watch. A lot of these are marked sold. A lot of these are sold. You know, I, I sold a few watches on here. They all sold, except for my my Hooligan. If anyone's watching this and they're looking for a Vero Hooligan, they only made 120 of these. I'm selling it for $425. That's what I paid for it. Brand new. So, um, let's see. Where is the Tudor? I don't see it, Dane. Is it buried or did you take it off? I was trying to get to it. Those are all sold. Those are sold. It must it must have been taken off. Sold that. Oh, you took it down. Okay, well, I was going to post it up. If anybody's looking for a Tudor Black Bay 925 for cheap, hit up Celine Driver. Dane, he's got one. Um, I almost, I would be interested in buying it too. I'm just, I'm a little tapped out right now. What else is going on in here? What are people buying? Just arrived. Looks like bridge, bridge watches just picked up a Zin. What else is going on here? Oh, Winnipeg Jim already got the, uh, check that out. Good score, bud. Already picked up the white dial, uh, speedy. That's awesome. He's got a good connection. He's up in Canada. He's got a good connection up there. He's He's got an excellent relationship with his AD. So he was probably like one of those, uh, when it came in, It was he probably just called and they were like, yep, it's yours, come get it. Here's some wrist shots. Ginger Down Under posting up a wrist shot while we're on the live stream. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and give that a random Rob like. That's pretty cool. What's going on in news and new releases? Ooh, look at Anonymous Poach Guy. The Bulova Marine Star in the 262 kilohertz. That's a new release uh, from them. That's a pretty good looking dial. I wonder what size it's going to be. That's a good looking watch though. What? What? Boo. Oh, there was some back and forth going on when this, this uh, Breitling... Came out the orange dial aerospace. That's pretty cool. People loom. Let's look at some loom. There's a Panerai with some loom. Citizen. There's an Aries. This is a tour watch. Out on tour right now with a little loom shot. Uh, Jack Mason, full loom bezel. Very bright. Some Seiko action. You guys ever try to play this game where you could like look at these and you can look like you're like that's that's a Seiko. Um, what is this? What is this? What watch would this be? Is that a Baltic? I can't tell what that is. Try to guess what these are. You ever do that? We should do that. Play like a guessing game. Ah, oh, that's a citizen. You can see the underwear right there. Um, that I don't know. Some of these I can guess. Some of them I can't. 
know what that one is. That's a Spinnaker. That's a Swiss Watch Company USA. Of course, it's labeled right there. That's a Zelos. So you can tell Zelos a mile away. We should do that. I should uh, set up a guessing game, and it could even be a competition. Somebody could actually win something uh, and guess all of the watches in the loom shot. And I will definitely throw some curveballs. I could probably do something like that. That would be potentially fun, fun little game. I'm also thinking about at the San Francisco windup, I'm thinking about, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Some sort of scavenger hunt. Some like if you, uh, I don't know, some sort of riddle where you could maybe find a watch that I hide or something. I got to figure something out. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Check this out. Tennessee Mike says, most of us that buy on flippers need some room when we flip. So um, I think what you're saying is, you know, usually they'll impulsively buy something and then shortly after they end up flipping a couple watches themselves. I agree. I agree, Random Rob. That is a great idea. I think we should do guess that watch only by the loom, just the loom. Todd says, I think a lot of flippers is timing as well. Yeah, for sure. Right watch, right price, right buyer. All at the right time. Yeah, the stars have to align a lot of times for the sales of watches. And in the flippers paradise in the Discord, I mean, it's a it's a small pool of buyers too. So name name that loom. Well, is that how we would say that? It would be name that watch uh, loom shot only or something. I don't know because... Some are going to be really easy, and I will probably give. I'm going to try to throw that video together. I will do some easier ones, but I'm going to do some hard ones. So, anyway, my tutor is on Chrono. Here we go. Dane's throwing it up on Chrono 24. It'll sell eventually there. I would assume so, depending on the prices on it. Spot that. Spot that loom shot. I don't know. We can figure out a name. Doesn't doesn't have to have a fancy name. Paul says, do you ever sell your watches to exquisite timepieces? Do they give a good offer? I pretty much only own micro brands, and exquisite's not going to buy those. I've never sold a watch to exquisite. I have had them price out, I think, and they were only doing trades at the time. So, um, oh, there you go. That's probably, that, that would work right there, Mark. Loom Trivia. That would work. So... Um, yeah, I usually sell my watches like dirt cheap on the, on the, uh, discord flippers paradise. So when I list them up, usually people jump on them and then I get, a, then I'll get people messaging me going like, Hey, can you tell me who bought that? Because then they're going to like go over to them and be like, Hey, I want dibs on that. If you sell it or something, because I just list them like just to sell, just to sell them. So, yeah, Scavenger Hut would be fun. I'm, I might even reach out to some brands and um, figure out something. I don't know. Figure out something. See if any brands are on board with it. You know what? Let's go look at real quick. Look, Because I don't... I don't remember the lineup exactly for San Francisco. So let's look at the lineup... Because this is the first weekend in May. So let's go past the lead sponsors. Okay, here's the full roster. So who could I reach out to that would probably work with me um, for – oh, thanks for the pop-up uh, – for doing something. I could – a brew. Brew might work with me to do some sort of watch giveaway or swag or something. Uh, who else would potentially work with me? Let's see. Duckwork would maybe work with me. Formex maybe. Um, Islander, yeah, Mark would definitely work with me. Uh, Jack Mason would probably work with me on doing something. Um, who else? Who else? Um I and maybe William Wood. 
Who would I work with here? I, I think it'd be fun to work with Brew. Maybe I'll reach out to Brew, Christopher Ward. Somebody write this down, will you? Write this down. I got a lot of ideas I'm thinking here. You know, uh, somebody write this down. So Brew, Christopher Ward, Duckworth, Formax, Jack Mason. I don't I don't see anybody on here that I would in William Wood. Um I don't have a fresh contact at Zodiac yet. And some of these are gonna to be too expensive. Like they, they might be able to do swag or something, but they're not gonna do you know like a watch giveaway. That's why I think like um Brew would probably work with me on something. Jack Mason, maybe if I put in on it. Formex, they're kind of expensive too. So, and then Islander, but yeah, I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm thinking I want to do something with Brew. I've never really worked with them. We we get along great. We always talk, and uh, I haven't really worked with them on anything. So, I have, I'm gonna try to lean on them. See if he wants to do a little fun little project. That might be kind of fun. And they move their venue, so I think where's the Bay Area folks? James, you're here. Uh, Fedora gents here. Is this like a picture kind of where the event's going to be? Is it on one of these piers? Am I going to be able to push someone off into the water and watch them get eaten by a shark? Is that an option? Or wait, don't push me off. Watch show bingo cards. Uh, yeah, we could do something like that, like a bingo run or something. Yes, it is that pier. Okay, cool. It is that pier. So I could... Awesome. So, yeah, we got to be careful not to get knocked in the water. Yeah. That building on the pier, one of these buildings, whatever. So where's the hotel? Is it like over here? The hotel I'm looking at? Can't I just do a tent right here? Don't people just live in tents right here? Can't we just go camping here? It looks like, look at all this green. I think it's, I think there's free camping right here somewhere. I think, I don't know. I remember seeing a lot of tents the last time I was there. Uh, homeless camp? No, no, no. They're just no, no. Dane, they're not homeless camping. They're just camping. Like, don't you ever camp? They just camp. Why don't they do it? At, oh, that would be oh, Chris. I like the way you think. We should do the watch show at Alcatraz. I don't think that's a venue for that. I don't think you're allowed to ever, like rent it out. Von Gros says camping is very popular in cities now. Can you imagine if we just started like camping in cities though as like non-homeless people, just like uh, just urban camping? You know, I don't want to go on the wilderness. I want to have a, a mocha latte matcha thing in the morning at the local uh, barista, and I want to have you know a couple of cocktails at night and stuff like that. It, it's I just want to camp downtown. What's wrong with that? Uh, let's see. There should be a off anchor community on boots. I'm trying to read some comments. No, it's homeless living. <laughs> Sun is always shining in promo shots. Uh, it was the weather's been nice every time I've been there. It's called drunk and asleep on a park bench. Never done that. I've never done that. Okay, so the venue is there. They moved the venue. That's pretty cool. I gotta book my hotel. And I need to go bug Brew and see what he says. And then I got to figure out how the heck I'm going to do some sort of giveaway or something. I don't know. Fedora Gent says tour guide part two. I don't know that we need to do the driving tour guide like we did last time. I really appreciate it. I think you're the best tour guide I've ever had. And I actually mean that. I'm not being sarcastic. Um, but I think maybe going, I, I wanted to explore more where you showed me like where you kind of grew up the old part of town and remember, um, uh, Daniel went in and got us like a couple of those little donuts or whatever. Um, I think I want to explore that area a little bit. Maybe we park and actually go walk a little bit. I know it's steep and everything, but that looked really quaint. That looked really cool. No, he doesn't have a Tesla. He's got a, an Audi. North Beach. Is that what that is? That's North Beach area. I think I would like to go park and walk around over there. 
that place looked cool. It looked cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's do that. I don't and I don't know if that's where Fedora Gen. I don't know if that's where you were talking about the little mini meetups you guys do. If that's where the brewery is or not. I'm fine going to there too. We can go do that. But I definitely want to go check out uh, North Beach a little bit more as well. That's just my own personal little want on that trip. And honestly, I'm not going to stay at the the wind up show a ton. If I'm completely honest, I'm going to go there. Uh, I don't think I fly out till Monday. So like I might actually do the show a little bit more on Sunday, Saturday. I'll probably pop in, but then I want to go do stuff Saturday. I'm not hanging out at the show all day Saturday. So I think, I think Saturday we, uh, as a group, we all, I'd rather just go do something. I mean, the lineup looks pretty good for that show, but honestly, I'm not, I'm not super excited about, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just losing my taste for some of the shows, but I this will be the third year in a row that I'm looking at trying to do all three windups. So um, I that's a triple triple. So uh, James says your mini meetup spot is too far from San Francisco, but we can all go to Tommy's joint. Hey, it's your guys' area. You guys figure it out. I'm just along for the ride. And hopefully a bunch of free food and drinks or whatever you guys are paying for. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Mark, I, I don't know if I should click on that. Mark says, uh, some cities in the U.S. now make benches you can't sleep on. Uh, yeah, what is that called? Um, Passive aggressive. It's, isn't it called like a hostile? Uh, I can't remember what they call it. Hostile... Um, Something, I don't know. Yeah, they make it so, like, none of it's comfortable, so. Oh, yeah, right there. That's it. I knew it was something like that. Thank you. Hostile architecture. Uh, Joe says, metal show on Saturday. Yeah, you're going to that. I'm not going to go to that. I'm not going to go to that. I'm, I'm not young like you, Joe. I can't I can't hang. I know it. Um, super cool um, to hang out with you when we can, but, man... I, I, a metal show? You know, I got the insertional Achilles tendonitis thing going. You know, my back hurts. My beard's white. I don't know. I just I can't metal show? Come on, I can't do it. Related to the, let's see. Bad bench. To, uh, Dane says, two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. Uh, that's what she said. Okay, uh, let's see. Mark says, uh, Rob, you should go to the metal show with a set of earmuffs. It's called, it's called aging. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not going to um, I'm not gonna go to the metal show. Oh, the friggin' lineup of that metal show looks awesome, though. There's some bands on there that I have not heard in a long time. So, Aha, Floridian. With a little... Doo -doo -doo only metal show for me is watches. That is that is pretty cool. Uh, well, hey, Joe, what is the... I, let me share the screen again. I, I want to look at that. I don't know what the... Um, I don't know where the venue is exactly. So, San Francisco, May 4th concert... Um, I got to see if I can find it unless Joe tells me what it is. Uh, Joe says, yeah, I know you're older, but you're in way better shape than I am. I need like a personal trainer and a, uh, a nutritionist or something. I've let myself get out of control a little bit. What is that show called? Um, Joe, where the, I want to look at the venue. I want to look at the uh, lineup. I mean. Fozzie, thanks for joining us. I'll see you on the next one. Um, I'm not seeing it exactly. Hmm. I don't know which one it is. Metal. Oh, there it is. Okay. You just... So it's called uh, Mega Fest. 
which is appropriate because, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, watches, Omega, all that stuff. So here's the lineup. It's Biohazard, Forbidden, Exciter. I was actually jamming some Exciter not that long ago after seeing this lineup. Uh, Warbanger, Hatred, I uh, can't read that, Frolic, Hellbanger, and then Bewitcher. Some of those I haven't heard, and I can't I can't really read that. That's They should have done better with that. I can't. Oh, here's a lineup anyway. Deathgrave, I guess. I'm not familiar with Deathgrave either. 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 How much are tickets? Movements. Man, there's a there's a bunch of other concerts too. So it is Christian. Yeah, YZ8. It is actually, it is a, uh, it's a clean show. It's uh, Christian rock. Um, it is, that is true. You can donate to the Christian rock concerts. Uh, hard pass. How much are tickets? Except doors open at three o'clock. General admission. It's only sixty bucks. They probably tack on fees after that. Limit six tickets. We could go to a rock concert, guys. That's not. That's sixty bucks. There's does not include convenience or handling fees, which will probably be like three hundred dollars. Whatever. Not ready to buy tickets. No. I'm just looking. Calm down. Just looking. Eric, thanks for joining. See you on the next video, live stream. Free admission with a pig's head. They probably would let you in. Maybe. Backstage, maybe? I don't know. Oh, um, I guess we can do a loom shot or something. <laughs> you son of a gun. T Tennessee Mike. Ah. Uh. Senior discount. Come on. Um, I mean, I only put two watches out on the table, which is pretty weak, but I'm going to give you the loom shot anyway. Um, I mean, there's loom. The ZRC loom is clearly better than the Doxa. They're both great watches. We'll see. Um, okay, thanks for joining. Joe says it's $75 with fees, so it's still not bad. I feel like I could probably do a ghost story now. Do I, do I have a flashlight or something? I could do a flashlight right here and then do it tell a ghost story. I'm not good with not good with uh where's my flashlight? Hello? All I have is this UV light. Does this do anything? That's not good for oh man, right in my eye. Okay. Let's do those though. There, that's better, Loom. All right, guys, thanks for joining in on the live stream, and I'll see you on the next video.